in a semi, I was very wild. In this review of the tale of this paradox, I will sound like a robot for the rest of the episode. Nat, this is truly and this is me, and I will. Okay, good. Okay, you are not the Hulk. I mean, sure, nowadays we got technologies phones, USBs to store your information and all your banking credits. I just got the jackpot to my mom's movie and ranking credits. All I need to know is the password so I can actually use it. Yeesh. Which I really don't know to hack. But I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out. One day. Alright. And nowadays we even have more technologies too. The phone you're using or the computer or whatever device you're using to watch this video. By the way, thank you 181 subscribers. And YouTube is awesome too. Nowadays, you can just quit your job to make more money on YouTube. Also, I highly recommend that you save up money from your job before you quit your job and so that you can live on that if your YouTube channel doesn't work. And this channel has been a bust for a while now. But at least one thing that I can say about this is that it's nothing more better than a good day with tech with non-technology books. And so that's how this whole business started. I started reading this. Because I saw this, and it kind of reminded me of a this. And so that all seemed to happen. And the next thing I just know right now is that I'm reading a story about a mice who becomes a knight. At least something sort of like a knight. I'll explain right now. If you read, if you watch my summary, it's a very poorly done summary because I just want you to read the book. All right. The one thing that is done right now is that this is the tale of this Rox is the tale of this mouse who is shunned by his own community for talking to the humans. Let me say that again. For talking to the humans. And then because he talked to the humans, he is banished to the dungeons, being going to be eaten by rats. And the shred master ties red wool red shred all around his head, like around his neck, and it says Secretly, do you like the princess? Yeah, I do. She's the best, she's the most beautiful one in the world. And blah, 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 blah. After later, as things escalate, the boss escapes from his people, from the people who are escorting him to the dungeons. And then, the thing is, uh, he does not like the dungeons at even one bit. We go to the rats who decides that suffering is the worst thing to do. Because once he went into light, his heart was broken, and then. He decided that he did not want to be with these guys again. And so his heart became men broken. Now here's the thing about people with hearts. Anyone can have hearts. Any living thing can have hearts. But it can be broken too. And if some hearts can't be mended. But others that do sometimes turn out crooked. Meaning that they can no longer become their old selves. It's a chain reaction too. It's a punishment too for what he's seen and what he wanted. All you kind of need to do is go for your needs. But once you've done all your needs. You can start becoming your wants. But then. When everyone says. No one cares about what you want little girl. Smack 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 smack. For years and six years. Smack 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 on the ears. You become deaf. And that's why that little girl says. Oh is very influenced by rest. Because they're the ones who finally know. Who, fi who can finally hear her and can make her hear her, hear them. So she becomes friends with them and they trick her into getting the princess back into the dungeons. And that happened a little too fast for my opinion. At least, and even for the princess and the maid themselves. And then they got trapped in there because Rast said, Fools, you'll never become princess and maid. Ha 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 I tricked you. Rats are so tricky. And then the mouse came and saved them all by doing this. Yay! But here is the actual motive of the whole thing. The rat wasn't killed by the mouse. In fact, everyone seems to come happily ever after. This story teaches us lots of things about feelings too. It teaches us the story of life, love, forgiveness, and anything that happens to be forgivable too. This book was written in 2003, so it's kind of an old story by now. It's been 20 years old. And the thing is, anything with a heart can be broken, as long as you say the right words, that is. My cat's heart can be broken. My heart has been broken several times. Not in the ways that you know. I mean, it's been broken, but it's mendable. It's like, crack. Crack. Like, those sorts of things. And then finally, when the times arrived, lots of 
actually, let's just say weird things have happened to me. And the whole motive of the story, that my guess is, is that hearts, life, love, whatever the rules of society are, there's so many rules in society that it might kind of remind you of the giver too. It's just that this meaningless society would mean nothing to us if we just defied them. Because there's no point for all these rules. Where is the point that we cannot interact with humans? Or we cannot interact with little nasty little dirty little rats? We cannot, well I mean I get the rats, but we cannot interfere with little nasty little cute, but yes they're cute, but they're nasty and small and not cute. And the cute part is just luring into their traps because they're mice and they are cousins of rats and every rodent or cousin or any relative or anyone directly related to the rats are in fact part of the rat school and they're taking over the whole world. I mean, sure, um, okay, take whatever you want, but you have to make that into a law of saying every mice, every rodent you find, kill him. Even a hamster? Even a hamster? I mean, I had a hamster. It was nice. That's kind of the thing. It teaches us that when people are scared and when people are sad, they do foolish things. And some people have to be there to actually prevent all this foolishness from happening. Because if it does happen, it kind of becomes a waste of time, and it becomes everyone's problem. And every, it's not everyone hates rats. Already, right, I hate rats, but not everyone hates mice. Not everyone hates hamsters. Well, maybe my mom does, but not everyone hates cats. I love cats. Yeah, what I want to say is, the tale of this rocks also teaches us about love. But how life can be so cruel, if life can be so cruel, what it can do to a person, and what it can do to anyone who turns out just wanted to have a good, big, happy life, gets tricked with the most evil of hearts to do something more evil, and when they realize it, they realize it's too late to stop. I mean, sure, it's not too late to stop doing what they planned you to do, but it's too late to escape from their clutches. What I mean to say is, life is unfair. No one else, except probably your parents, would really care about what you wanted. No one else, except probably your parents, your guardians, whoever is keeping you alive and feeding you and all that. Except maybe the ones who say, You waffle it! You get a slave! Oh, those people. Other than those people, those people will probably don't care about you at all. But the people who do care about you, they might be the ones who are your ticket out of here. What? is to say is that the tale of this Birox, if it has taught us anything, it is that it has taught us despair, love, and to lots of young readers that life is very unfair. So don't think that tantrums will help you because it worked on your mom and dad. And also to see to it that when life is unjustified, sometimes even the tiniest person you know can become the strongest person in the world. And look at Peter Parker. He had no muscles, and then by sheer accident, he got muscles and got spider powers. Look at the boxer, that, that was literally so small. He was very good at karate, yeah, sure. And then he eventually, one day, he was able to big punch the previous champion, who was like twice his size. Well, that's the tale of the Spirox. Have people who look like wimps can become the strongest people in the world. And people who seem to act like they're strong, but are wimps inside, are also probably the biggest wimps in the world. And that whatever you see, always have a big brave heart inside of you so that you can use it as a weapon, your own weapon. For your smarts is better than your strengths. You don't have muscles, and the other person has muscles. Use what they don't have. Most muscle people don't have brains except for maybe people like Peter Parker. But if, you, if that's all you got, use it. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you guys soon enough. So until next time, shout out of the tale of Desperox, and please tell me in the comments below if you like cats by clicking like. Let's get at least two likes, please. See you soon. Bye-bye. What is going down there, Claude? Hmm? You just want to rest there? Sure. Fine.
I'm gonna write, make, make a rap book. <laughs>